Good afternoon, everybody, or morning for those of you on the West Coast. Um, welcome to the second webinar for member recognition. The first one uh, was held this morning at 11 a.m. Central, and the recording will be posted um, along with this recording um, later, maybe later on today, if not for sure next week. Um, so that if you have folks in your state that need to go back and watch and uh, get up to speed on the awards process, they'll be able to do that. The PowerPoints will also be posted with those videos. I'll send those to John after this webinar today. My name is Cheryl Newberry, <clears throat> and I'm the National Member Recognition Chair for um, uh, our association. And I also want to introduce to you um, Melissa Henry, who's on with us today. She is the um, chair elect of the member recognition committee and will be taking my place um, at the meeting in Des Moines uh, and I'm uh, excited to have Miss Melissa on board uh, to serve in this role and she will be um, listening carefully today and taking some notes on if questions that we need to address with our committee uh, as we move forward throughout the year so thank you Melissa and welcome thanks Cheryl um, so today, this particular webinar is going to focus specifically on how to enter awards in the open water system. I am going to give a little uh, background information on some general awards criteria uh, and information. Um, we went over details for communicator specialty, first time attendee, and service awards in the first webinar. So if you want more details specific to those awards categories, you can watch the webinar that was held this morning later, uh, but today uh, we will focus primarily on the awards system, um, entering awards into the online system. So this is the topics that we'll talk about today. You can see the first few are duplicates from our previous webinar. <clears throat> um, the meat of our presentation today will be spent on the features of the open water system, how to complete an application, and just a little bit of information about awards judging. We won't be going into very much detail, but just to give you an um, idea of how that um, process will work um, um, for you state contacts who need to know the process um, now so you can be preparing for that. Um, as well. So let's start with where is the award information posted? The, this is the direct link to the website uh, page for awards and I'll be showing you how to get to that page uh, on from the main page of the NAE 4HYDP uh, website a little bit later. Um, and I'll walk you through those steps on how to find um, the awards information, the link to get to the open water system. Um, I'll show you all that information when we go to the website. Here's the basic uh, information on awards eligibility for all of the awards unless it's stated otherwise within a specific award. Um, all active and life members are eligible to submit awards. Um, <clears throat> applicants must have been an active member the year prior to applying, so in 2019, as well as the current year, which is 2020. And we will uh, base the membership status on whether you were a member on January 31st or by January 31st, 2020. Um, so make, uh, if you uh, have, have any influence in your state to make sure that your membership check gets sent in before that January 31st deadline, please be an influencer and make sure your state gets their dues in on time so that, that everyone in your state is eligible for awards or those that pay their dues are eligible for awards. Um, if you are submitting an award on behalf of a multi-state um, uh, team, the person um, with the primary, uh, the primary applicant should come from a state with the most members of the team. If that's not the case and they're spread out from, there's 10 team members and they're from 10 different states, one of you volunteer to uh, submit the award and um, include all of your team members. We have um, updated the field for team members to make sure that the state and region are both marked so that uh, we, that information is clear and I'll show you that in the application. Some other basic awards criteria, all award applications must be submitted no later than 8 a.m. Eastern on March the 2nd. That is a Monday morning, uh, 8 a.m. Eastern. 
Um, we moved it off of March the 1st because it was a weekend um, to give you the whole weekend to be able to finish your awards applications. Um, the system will actually close and will not allow for any other applications to be completed after 8 a.m. Eastern. Um, so no late entries will be accepted. And um, if you're in, your entry is incomplete, meaning you haven't finished all of the items within the application and hit the submit button at the end, um, they will not be, uh, uh, they will consi be considered disqualified and not be judged as a part of the complete applications. Um, there must be a separate submission for each of the different awards that you plan to apply for, and you cannot use the same exact application for more than one, uh, one award. So uh, make sure that you're tailoring your narratives and other information and attachments to the specific awards criteria. Uh, there shouldn't be any duplication of effort um, on the part of, of submitting the same application for more than one award. Um, your materials or program must have been completed or produced between January 1 to December 31 of 2019, so the previous calendar year, um, unless it's speci specified in um, the awards criteria. For example, there may be one or two that say um, your program should have been implemented over a period of multiple years or something along those lines. And so in that case, um, the program could have been ongoing over a period of time uh, outside of a one-year period. Previous national award, winner, award winners may not enter the same class in consecutive years. So if you've won the national award, for example, for um, uh, published photo, you can't apply for published photo again the next year. Um, identical entries, we already said that, can't be entered, and rules and guidelines for each award will be strictly enforced and um, uh, each award has its own uh, additional criteria beyond the basic criteria. So when you go to review the awards information, make sure you're reading specifically um, the details about the awards you intend to apply for so that you know all the criteria that must be met. A couple of other things is um, once you submit, hit the submit button and your application is considered complete. Um, we cannot open that application back up for you to add other information or other team members that you may have forgotten to put in. So make sure that you're reading and double checking all of that information um, before you hit the submit, submit button because there's no turning back once the submit button is hit. <clears throat> for team awards, um, of course, the person submitting the application must be a um, NAE 4-H YDP member um, meeting those uh, uh, criteria for being able to apply. Um, all of the communicator and specialty awards are now limited to no more than 10 members, which means the applicant and nine other individuals can be nominated for a team award. Um, there was a uh, mistake last year in the website um, on the open water website and the specialty award didn't have a limit set on how many spaces or how many people could be uploaded as team members um, but we rolled with it because we we couldn't change it midstream and we did have a couple of entries that had more than nine but we just allowed uh, everybody had that opportunity because it wasn't limited. So, but it is definitely fixed for this year. So make sure that your um, priority should probably be to association members to be a part of your team and then external uh, folks who have helped you with those particular uh, projects. It's up to you as an applicant to prioritize those team members if, they're, if you actually have more than 10. Um, if your state so chooses to recognize all of them, uh, at your state awards, then it'll be up to uh, your state association person to gather the other team members' information if you all want to do that, but we will not manage that in any way at the national level. All national awards will be presented at the conference. Regional awards will be presented at the regional event, uh, brunch or breakfast or whatever that ends up being, and then the national awards will be presented at the uh, celebration banquet. Um, unless 
uh, it's stated uh, all awards will be judged at, just at the state, regional, and national level, and I'll be showing you that list here in just a moment. And here they are. Um, these are the awards that will be judged only at the state and national level, and that's the Military Partnership Award, the Denise Miller National 4-H Innovator Award, the Life Member Award, and the Susan Barkman Research and Evaluation Award. Um, we could see a change um, next year for the Denise Miller uh, Award to be judged at all levels um, because that particular award has grown in, in the number of entries um, and it does have a monetary value attached to it. And so we've made a note to discuss that as a committee uh, to perhaps add in regional judging for that particular award. Here are the awards that do have money attached to them. So as you look through the, the list, um, I've tried to make sure that the donor information, if, if there is money uh, attached to that award, it is noted in um, the information packet and on the awards at a glance, both of those documents. But here's the list uh, as well. The Military Partnership Award has $1,200, which is a travel stipend to help you come to the conference. And if you don't attend, you don't get the money. Beyond Youth Leadership has a $1,000 award. Also, uh, all of these awards, the funds are distributed following the conference um, to the uh, winners. <clears throat> Beyond Youth Leadership also says, uh, has a stipulation that the winner must attend the national conference or provide a video of their program uh, highlighting what they did. So uh, uh, the rest of these do not require participation at the conference other than the first time attendee scholarship, which that's the whole purpose of that award is for people to attend the conference um, and have some help with registration. Denise Miller is $250, Geospatial, um, is $750 and the Life Member Award is $500. And the Excellence in Workforce Development Programming Specialty Award is a, a new award, fairly new. It's been, uh, we did give a cash award uh, last year um, of $100 and that committee had secured that donor, um, our working group secured that donor. Any questions about awards with money or those that, any of the general rules? Okay, excellent. Okay, so just to go over some of the features of the submission process and the open water system. So first of all, um, both the awards and seminar proposals for the national meeting are both um, completed through the open water system. So you've been receiving information about seminar proposals um, and that we're using the same system. So if you've used the, the seminar proposal uh, portion, you're going to see some similarities to the to that system versus the awards program or if you did either one of those items last year we're using the same system for the second year um, open water is linked with your membership which is your profile on the nae 4ha web web page when you log in to your to your membership that's the name of the platform we use for our website um, you can use the same login um, to log into the open water system and I'll show you uh, how to do that because there is a difference between um, an external user versus you as a member user. Um, the personal information fields, uh, some of those will automatically fill from your profile if you log in with your member with your membership profile information, uh, your login. So if you if you set up a different account um, in open water, um, for some reason, using Google or Facebook or something, um, those fields will not auto fill. Auto fill. So just make sure you're logging in with your membership to actually complete awards. Um, something new this year is the narratives um, information or part of the application will need to be typed and um, in Word and saved, either in Word or in PDF, um, in uploaded in the. Uh, designated field, there will not be a text box for you to type information in anymore. Um, the same would be true for the abstract for communicator awards. Type it in the Word document and upload it um, to the application. For other attachments, other documentation, um, 
uh, you can use any any format to upload those files. There is a file limit, file size limit of 20 megabytes per file. So larger files like videos or audio recordings or um, great big PDFs or, or PowerPoints may not uh, upload and it'll give you a message to that effect. So if that's the case, your better bet is to upload it to the website somewhere, to a website somewhere. Um, maybe if it's a video, you use a YouTube link or uh, to a website where that file can be accessed and you provide um, the link to that document uh, in the link field. And those are new fields that have been added to the applications we felt that was applicable. Um, so I think all of, most all of the communicator awards will have some link fields as well as document fields. Um, not all of them will be required fields so that you have the flexibility to be able to um, use those fields as you need to, to submit your documentation. And, and another thing um, that as an applicant, you will be able to view, print, and um, uh, download, uh, save your award application information um, after you've submitted the application. And likewise, um, if you are judging those awards and you prefer to have a paper copy, you can do that as well. I won't, I probably won't cover that until we do, well, I'll cover it today so you can, those of you um, who are uh, applying for awards will know how to do that and it'll be the same process for uh, judges. Any questions so far with the features of judging? It'll make a lot more sense if you've never seen the system when we go into the system. Cheryl, there was a chat question that popped up and it says, are they doing a second year attendee scholarship this year? Not to my knowledge, not this year. I think they're working on it potentially maybe for next year. They did not provide me any information for that. Let's just put it that way. And now it's too late. <laughs> So, but I know that they've discussed it, but I don't think they're ready to roll that out. Good question though. All right, um, so with the judging process, just a few details about that. I'm not gonna go into great details, but those of you that are serving multiple roles and have served as a judge before, this will be good information for you to know. The, you can do the judging process completely paperless. Um, you can view the application, all of the attachments, any websites directly from the open water system, and you can fill out the um, uh, score sheet online as well. Um, we, we have uh, have started the process of asking for judges' names. Um, I sent the email yesterday to the regional contacts with the spreadsheet for them to communicate directly with their state contacts within their region. Um, and that information is due back to those regional contacts from the state contacts on February 15th. This morning, I sent the email out to all the national working group and committee contacts with their spreadsheet to send back their judges for national level judging. And then the regional contacts also have their spreadsheets to, to recruit and secure judges for regional level judging. All of those spreadsheets are due back to be by February 15th because it takes time for us to get those entered and assigned to the correct categories in the open water system and we will be working on that while um, while uh, application the application period is finishing up the last two weeks of February and we have to have the state judges ready to go by the time um, judging uh, or your applicant application process ends on May the uh, sorry March the 2nd so that we can turn around and open judging for uh, state level judging. Um, and so it's critical that state contacts get your judges recruited um, and sent back to fill out your spreadsheet and send that back to your uh, regional contacts um, by the February 15th deadline. And there will be detailed information in the email they send you with how to assign your judges to make it a flawless process, both for you and for us to enter them into the system. So please pay attention to your email. Um, once we get the judges all entered, um, we have an email system within the open water system and 
um, the judges will get an email that provides them a link to the open water system to be able to access their uh, applications to judge. The manager on the state level, which is your state member recognition chair, will also get an email that says they have access to track and review and make sure your uh, judges are completing their assignments. And then once uh, categories have finished um, being judged, they can mark the winner and move them forward. We will go over in detail in a training in February um, uh, that will be targeted toward judges and um, awards managers on the state and regional level. So um, be sure you put that date of February 18th on your calendar um, so that you can pr participate in that uh, training. Scoring I mentioned would be online in the uh, score sheet. And a new thing that we've added is a spot for comments, uh, for the judges to be able to make comments pertaining to what they saw in the awards application, what they, what they did well, um, what needs to be improved, um, if their application was disqualified and why. You know, some of those comments will be helpful to the applicant because we are, after all judging is completed, after June 1st, which it'll probably be first part of, end of June or first part of July, we will make those applications visible to the, to the applicants so they can see the comments on the score sheets. That's been a request, people um, wanting to know how can they improve their applications if they don't know what they're doing wrong or how they're scoring in particular sections of the score sheet. So we, can do, uh, we do have the capability of doing that. We're gonna try that this year. Um, but they will, the score sheets I don't believe will have the judges, in, any of the judges information on them uh, as to who judged um, the category or anything like that. It'll just be the score sheets. And I've already mentioned the first one that, that the contact sheets uh, or judging assignment sheets have already gone out. Um, and there's the information on the webinar on February the 18th. I've pretty much said everything that's on this screen here um, when I was covering the last slide. Any questions so far with judging process? Okay, I'm gonna switch screens and go to my... I have a quick question. Okay. Um, how many judges do you recommend? Two or three? The uh, recommendation is for at least two per category, um, but no more than three because last year we had some that had one, some that had two, some that had three, some that had seven, some that had 10, and maximum is three. And so one of the things that um, we will cover on the, well, and I probably need to say now is, um, okay, first of all, Hold on, I'm sorry, I can't do more than one thing at once. What can you see on the screen? Your desktop. Okay. Now can you see the website? Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Um, so if, if you have a situation, for example, you assign judges um, you send us the spreadsheet, and then then you realize that Teresa has assigned to judge um, an exhibit, the exhibit category, but she entered an exhibit, so she can't judge those on the state level. All you have to do is email me this information. What's their name? Or first of all, what category are we talking about? Um, that would be exhibit. What judge needs to be removed, and what who are you replacing them with and what is their email? Because I have to have name and email in order to reassign that to a new person. It can be someone that you've already assigned to something else, or it could be a totally new person. We would, we would just need to make sure that, that um, they get the information to access the judging information. It's best if you see those uh, conflicts happening as awards applications are coming in for you to let me know that before we start the judging process on March the 2nd. So it's important for you once you get your judges assigned to keep that list in front of you as a state contact 
and watch for those conflicts um, as they arise and send that information to me. So um, just just keep keep a check on who's applying. But in some most people, by the time you contact and start recruiting for judges, probably already know or have a pretty good idea of what they're going to apply for, and they can let you know that and avoid those conflicts before you assign them to judge a category. On the email that you're going to be receiving, if you haven't received it already, one of the other things that will really help us, I'll just pull up the spreadsheet because it makes more sense when you see it. Sorry, I'm having to switch gears here. Okay, I'm almost there. Okay. I can't get the come on. Here's my share button. Okay, sorry. Okay. Can you see the spreadsheet on the screen now? Anyone? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so here's an example of the uh, a state um, judges form. So the top four are is a good example of how you can group your judges. So the same three people, Jane Doe, Pretty Girl, and Nice Man, are both, they're all the same three judges are judging those first two categories. And then three different people are judging the next two categories, Johnny, Peter, and Shazam. Okay, that's a good example. Here's a bad example. This is what happened on some states last year is, Jane, Peter, and Pretty Girl are judging the first award, and then the next line there's three different people, and then the next line there's three different people, and then the next line there's three different people. So that means you have every time you change a set of judges, we have to put in a whole new judging group and, and do assignments for every single award. So the more you can group, like this first one, whoops, um, the better it is, one, for you, to track your judges and two for us to be able to efficiently and correctly make the judges assignments on the website and I know it's not possible in all cases however the more you can do it like this this first part of the spreadsheet the better it is for for you and for us does that make sense And this is only for state level judging. No, it's for all levels. But but for example, at the regional level, there's fewer categories, and typically there's there's the same um, set of people judging multiple cat. The regional people did a much better job of grouping them like this than the state did. At the national level it's even fewer categories like the um, regional contact for the south only has seven categories they have to have judged and they had you know maybe six people judge those categories for the working groups they only have one award that they're one maybe two there's a couple of category or a couple of working groups that have two awards um, so there's only one set of people so it's most important on the state level because that's the hugest volume of number of judges that we have to put into the system. Does that make sense? Well, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that I know what I'm asking a person that they're going to be required for. So if I ask Jane Doe to judge, will she be first judging state things? And then she potentially could judge regional things and national things or yeah, will it just yeah. be state? No, it would be, it's fine. We def often have people who judge it at um, all three levels. 
Um, maybe not the same categories, uh, which would be our preference that the same person not judge the same category all the way through, but I'm not tracking that. So, so don't worry about that. But, but the state people worry about getting your state judges. The regional folks will take care of the regional judging and then nationally we have both regional and working group people that will be recruiting judges. Okay, that's what I wanted to hear. Thank you okay, very much. Okay, great, sure. Okay, any other questions about this spreadsheet before I close this? Okay, all right, I'm gonna go back to the website. Okay, are we back to the website? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Abby. Okay, um, so this is the main page of the website, and I'll walk you through how to find the awards page first. So if you go to the participate link, and then down to awards, and over to application, this is the main awards page. Okay, so I'm going to go to the bottom first and, and explain th this information here that is the national award winners for service communicator and specialty. These are simply lists of past winners. Okay. The bottom two section, two links is actual, the winning applications for communicator and for specialty in two great big PDFs. Not pretty, but this is what it looks like when we pull it off the website. Um, because we've had people that said, but we want to see what the winning applications were like so we can compare our applications. What are we doing wrong? That was one way of comparing um, to figure out how to strengthen your applications. Those are all there and they'll stay there um, so that you can uh, have access to those. Okay. So the rest of the website is pretty straightforward. This link will take you to the awards uh, system, the open water system. We'll go there in a minute. Um, this is our link to the next webinar. John's already edited the website and taken today's webinars off. So this will be the information um, for you for our February uh, training for awards and, and award, awards judges and managers. Um, and John, you can take this whole, whole section off because it's all right here and above. <laughs> I just noticed that that was still on there. Oh no, that's the recordings. Never mind. Um, okay, and then here's the section for the, all the documents that you're going to need to be familiar with to be able to complete your applications um, efficiently and effectively. So I'll just click on a couple of these. This is what the communicator award information looks like. Um, this is the general information that I went over in the PowerPoint just a little bit ago. And if you continue scrolling, there's the list of the categories. And then also here is the specific information for this particular educational package category that you need to pay attention to and follow in order to complete your abstract. And then the score sheet for that particular category. And there's the purpose is outlined for each of those um, app awards categories. This is a new tip sheet for the Communicator Abstract Awards. I'm not gonna go through it, but um, all these details tell you what specific kinds of information you need to include in your abstract for each of those uh, topics. Objectives, target audience, current population, and so on. This, this information is also in the document I just had open. I, we just wanted to have a quick one pager for you as well. Specialty awards is the same with regard to how it's formatted. It looks like that first document does. Um, so do these others. The member recognition at a glance is a Word document. The others are PDFs. Um, it's typically used by state contacts to add your state specific information for awards and then send that out to your state members. Um, uh, so that they have both the national uh, and, the, and your state specific award information in it. So it's in Word for you if you choose to use that. If you need these in Word and you don't have Adobe Pro to be able to convert it to a Word document, just email me and I can email those Word documents to you. So there's the website. Any questions about how to find things there? 
Okay, moving on, we're gonna go to the website, a words website. So first of all, let me do this. This is what it would look like if you've not logged in and you don't have your credentials saved to be able to sign in. This is what the login page looks like. See the difference in, in how there's an option to log in with Facebook or LinkedIn, and then it says sign in using your credentials. That's your My Membership login credentials for the NAE 4HYDP website. So make sure you're using the same login and password. And, and if you don't remember your password, you can reset it here. Um, if you're a brand new member, say you're applying for a first time, uh, First Timers Award and you haven't filled out your stuff on the NAE 4HA website, you need to do that first, but you can also join here. Um, but I would recommend you go to the NAE 4HA website and make sure you're a member on there first. Okay, I'm gonna sign in. Okay, that is not where it was supposed to take me. Let me try that again. Let me just go here. Okay, here we go. Okay, so when you first log in, this is um, this information is the same as what's across the top. So if you go to NAE 4HA Awards, if you click on Welcome, this is just some basic information about when they're due, um, how you do your service awards. Um, which is totally different than um, the Communicator and Specialty Awards. Um, and then also information that the first time attendee scholarship is within the Specialty Awards category. So just some basic information. This is your toolbox here, your menu bar um, that shows your progress. So I already have three applications in progress, just so I have some examples to show you. Um, if you, you know, all this other stuff is, you know, change something on your profile or your password or whatever if you need to do that. So there's the um, welcome menu. If you go to awards applications, then you see the opportunity to go to information specific to communicator or specialty awards. Um, this, you can't start applying for service awards or filling out service awards information right now anyway. It will not open until April. Okay, so let's look at communicator. So this, when you click on communicator awards, this is what it looks like when you uh, want to begin a new application. And here's the link that says, click here to apply. And that'll start you a new application. Those general rules are here for you. Um, if you don't have your written copy in front of you, just so we're trying to make it available in multiple places. So, um, I'm going to open one that I already have in progress so you can see. So just so you know, if you do have something in progress already, when you go to this menu bar, you click on in progress and it'll bring up on the screen the applications that you've started. So um, if you decide you don't want to complete that application, you can click on remove or you maybe you selected the wrong category. You could delete it and start over or you could just edit and change the category, um, that is certainly an option as well. So this one I've started is for a, a promotional piece and we'll walk through the parts of the application and some of this auto filled and some of it I had to type in, um, but here is the drop down menu. So if you selected the wrong category, you can certainly choose to change to a different category and it'll um, populate with the correct information that you need to be filling out for that particular award. This was a, a confusing uh, field last year because it just said title, and a lot of people thought that was their professional title, and it is not. It is down here in the application. This is the title of the entry you're making. So I titled this one Biennial Conference Promotional Video because it's a promotional piece. Or I guess I could enter it in video. So depends on the criteria. But anyway, we're just gonna go with this for now. So this is all just basic contact information. Um, it asks for if you're a current member and what state you're from and what region you're from and how many years you've been in extension. I don't know why we asked that. Uh, I thought I was thought we were gonna take that off and we didn't get that done, so we'll just leave it for now. 
then you hit the, if you're finished with that and you don't have anything else to add right now, you can hit save um, and then go back to the top and click on my progress and go to a different application or you can hit save and next and go on to the next page of the application. Again, the abstract tells you the information you need to make sure you include and then it has the spot where you can upload your um, abstract which is no more than three pages, single spaced or double spaced, whatever you wanna do, just no more than three pages, um, one inch margins, 12 inch font, Word or PDF document, okay? So there's your abstract upload. And then there is a file upload. If, uh, if, if this video were small enough for me to upload it as a file, I could have done that but I chose to upload the link to the YouTube video and then it shows there for you and you can actually hit the button and it'll play for you. So that's how the judges can view those, okay? So as you can see, the options here for file upload and link, um, not all of it will be required. You don't have to do both. Um, just make sure you do one or the other so that we can see the actual item that, that this award is being judged on. And then you hit save and next, and it takes you to the last page where you say, can this award be shared? And um, you agree to all the awards requirements and all that good stuff. And that when you hit submit, you can't make any more changes. And then you hit save and finalize. And then you say, it asks you one more time, are you sure you wanna submit this? And then you can say, okay. And then if you look at, watch your box over here, it's going to change, maybe. Now it shows two in progress and one complete. So if you want to see your completed applications, you click on complete, and now there's no edit button available, but there is a print, a view, and a copy. Copy application, most people are not using, but if you wanted to copy this application, basically you duplicate it, it becomes in progress and you can change your category to a new category and change your attachments and um, abstract and whatever and um, save you some time on filling out all that initial information. But my recommendation is you just start a new, new one so you make sure you get information accurate for that particular award. Um, so if you want to print it, it'll download as a PDF. And this is what your application looks like. Can y'all see that? Okay, I'm assuming you can. Okay, we're back to the website. Okay, that's how you enter an application. Let's look at one that's a specialty award so you can see what the difference is in those applications. So, um, well, first of all, we had this question on the first time attendee application that there were some fields that were still on there for uploads that weren't supposed to be there. And so let's see if it's been fixed. It has. So there were some fields here to upload your abstract and, and um, narrative. And I emailed and they were able to hide those so they're not visible anymore to any applicants. It's just, uh, yeah, this one is the only one you have text boxes to type your answers in. These were so short, in most cases, it was just easier to do text boxes on this particular application. So that's really all there is to, to the first timers uh, scholarship is these three questions. So let me go back and change, um, change the category and let's look at something different. Oh, this is a different application. Okay, this is the Educational Technology Award. Um, again, I just use the same example, Extension Workers Creed video, and that's not accurate probably for this particular category, but you can see the, the information is the same. However, this time I marked, yes, this is a team application. And so when you mark yes, it brings up this field to add your team members. And um, 
Craig Woods is my um, team member because he's a, a specialist in ag communications and um, I, he is not a member of the association and so this phonetic spelling in uh, years I don't know why that looks so funny like it is oh are you a current member no oh this this has been added um, this year is please select your state association if they're not a member they're not a member of any state association so there is a field now that says not a member and for the region, there's also a, uh, one for not a member. So if they are a member, this is where um, you would mark their specific state and region, because if there's uh, members on your team that are outside of your state or region, that helps us to keep straight um, for recognition at the regional uh, recognition events that um, certificates go to the right region. Okay, let's go to the next page. So the, the specialty awards, that most of them look just like this, or they, I guess they all, except for first timers, look like this. Um, there's a spot for you to upload your abstract in Word or PDF. There's a spot for you to upload your narrative in Word or PDF. I would just suggest you just plan on doing um, those documents separately as you prepare for your awards. And then um, there is a URL for this particular one for educational technology. There should be a link to something technological that you did. So we put a URL link for you to link to that particular educational technology um, entry. Let's change the entry category to something different so you can see see the difference. Oops. Let's do volunteerism. Okay. Okay, so, so we've still got the abstract, but now the supplemental materials look different. So now there's three fields because supplemental materials for this particular award says you can have a maximum of three pages. Each of these uploads is no more than one page. So you can't have three different documents, the first one being um, a 15 page PowerPoint and the next one being a three page brochure and the next one being a a three page um, impact report. It's three maximum pages. You can attach them all together in one file or you can attach the three documents separately, but only three pages of documentation is allowed. That's, that's something we really struggled with last year, making that clear. And some applications um, based on the judging were disqualified because they had 25 pages of, uh, or they had three pages that was nothing but website links or links to documents online. This is actual documentation, not a page of links to multiple pages of documentation. Does anybody have any questions about that? I'm going to go back one more time and change this to one more category so you can see one more comparison. Uh, I don't know which one it is. Let's see what this one looks like. Okay, this is a, a Excellence in Teamwork Award, and you can see the abstract and narrative links are there as well, or uploads, and then there's the supplemental materials that can be up to three, and then there's some required letters of recommendation for this particular award. So if they're required, there's an asterisk, and this one requires um, 
all of these. So those are things to pay close attention to in the in the documentation uh, or in the information packet for for each specific award because if they require letters start now <laughs> don't wait till um the uh 28th of february to start working on your letters of recommendation because i don't think people want to do those on the last weekend before awards are due any questions so far this process is really pretty simple um, uh, we don't have any awards or we don't have any judges in the system to be able to assign awards once we'll have some judges in the system by the time um, the February 18th um, webinar uh, gets here and we'll go into detail um, about how judges are assigned and how as a judge or a manager you utilize this menu bar on the left hand side to access the awards that you're managing and or judging. So um, that'll be what we'll cover in the next webinar in February. Any questions at all? We are pretty much to the end of the demonstration. I um, think I've covered everything I need to. Um, I'm pretty sure service awards are turned off, but let me just try it and see. Yeah. Oh, no, it's up. Okay, so I'll have to change that. But so I'll just go ahead and cover this for those of you who are state contacts and will be putting the service awards in. Um, you do all of your judging at the state level based on the criteria that you require folks to fill out and turn in. All that we ask is once you select your state winners, the state member recognition chairs will come into this website to the service awards and they will enter their state winners. So um, first of all, you select the uh, category in which um, this recipient is uh, representing and then all of their contact information. It will not populate because you're not logged in as them. You'll have to type all of that information in. Um, and then the state association or unit, region, email, um, and then you'll, you can just cut and paste from their biography into this doc box and upload their photo and that's all you have to do. And, um, hit save and finalize and um, submit. And those were, will not be judged in any way beyond the state level. It's just information for us to gather and um, put the awards program together for the national meeting for those award service award winners. But again, this will, uh, this will open on March the, between the March the 2nd and the 5th, depending on when we, when we open up the awards for judging, um, for state level judging, we will open this service awards page for, for state member recognition chairs to be able to enter their state service award winners. Um, and so you'll have from the first part of March until April the 1st to enter your state service award winners. And it's imperative you get that information in during that time frame. One, so you can mark it off your to-do list and have it done. And two, we can begin the process of getting plaques printed. That takes a long time for all of these service awards. And um, we need to be able to download the list of, uh, for each of those types of awards and start sorting through that, double checking our, our information so that we can get that information to Jim and he can uh, communicate with donors who are printing awards. And we'll have less time to do that this year with um, the conference being earlier in October as opposed to November. Any questions about service awards? I forgot I opened this up so I could demonstrate this today and then I'll close it again after we finish. <laughs> Anything in the chat? Melissa or John or anyone? Wow. Excellent. 
Oh, um, there's a question on the chat that says, is judging a good way to involve lifetime members? Absolutely. They, as a judge, they don't have to be an NAE 4HA member. So I know a lot of states um, will ask communication specialists to help with those communicator awards, like a, a photographer to help with um, photograph the, you know, the published photo or a news writer to work with um, the news stories or feature story or some of those kinds of things. Um, when they get the invite, um, as a judge, even though it's an external email, they'll be able to set up an account um, with their own email and access, as a judge, the open water system. Mem uh, life members would be a great uh, group to involve in helping you judge. And John says that the first recording is already on the awards page. So thank you, John, and I'll email you the PowerPoint when we finish here today. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you guys for participating. We did this one in 55 minutes, so was able to keep it under an hour, and I appreciate your participation, and we'll get this recording Sounds like we'll get it uploaded today and he'll get the PowerPoints uploaded too and we will be here to answer questions when you need us. Thanks for participating. Have a great day. Thanks, John.